Every time I see the picture in the open of this video with Jerry pulling his pulsar, I just spontaneously grin. He seems like the kind of guy that you like to have around. He also knows his pulsar, as you will soon find out. Uh, I was looking for speed and economy, and this thing pretty much gives you that. We can cruise at 150 miles an hour at five gallons an hour, and this particular plane holds 29 gallons of gas, so I can pretty routinely go nonstop to Chicago from Washington or down to Florida from Washington. Uh, so it's a pretty econ economical cruiser. Uh, it's pretty straightforward. The uh, manual is easy to understand. It's an all fiberglass airplane. Um, the fuselage comes in two halves split the long way, and you put that together. And then you have to build on the cowlings, mount the engine, build the instrument panel, sand and paint. You have to build the wings. Um, it's a pretty easy thing to do. It's just time consuming. I, I'm pretty experienced. I've built several airplanes. Uh, this is the first, well, the gyro was all fiberglass, so this is really the second fiberglass thing that I built. I think what it takes is patience, tenacity. You know, if you, you have to stay with it. You know, and so many people get a kit, it looks like a lot, they work on it about a year and they give up. And uh, you have to just decide that you're gonna stay with it so that you get the reward at the end. I have a construction business in the Washington, D.C. area, so I work with my hands most of the time. So this is just kind of an extension of that. I built a Kit Fox, you know, a Skystar Kit Fox, which is a wonderful two-place, go slow, land anywhere airplane. And uh, I built a Sky Raider, which was the ultralight version almost of a Kit Fox. And I built the Auto Gyro. And I've been in on several ultralights. You know, that we built uh, Quicksilvers and uh, um, Rands, uh, the S-14, and um, the Phantoms, which is an ultralight, which are wonderful planes to have if you just want to go slow and fly around. Um, and after we've all done that for a while, we want to get into something that's faster so we can go somewhere. The uh, stock engine that came with this airplane is an 80 horsepower, nine, the Rotax 912. And what I did was I developed a piston that you put in it. It's really just a high compression racing piston. It raises the compression from nine to 10 and a half to one and gives you about another 15 horsepower, which, you know, there's no such thing as an airplane with too much power. So we're always looking for more. And so I developed this kit and the guys are like, and it saves them from having to buy the next up engine, which is about a $10,000 engine. All right, tell you what, why don't I take this off so we can get a look at the engine so we can see how easy it is to put in. This is the stock ultralight version of the 912, the Rotax 912 engine. It comes stock 80 horsepower. It's a four cylinder, horizontally opposed, four stroke engine. Um, it's the cylinders are air-cooled and the head is water-cooled, so there's a radiator down in the back. And, um, you know, it's got also an oil cooler. This is the oil tank right here. It's got dual carburetors. This engine has to run at 5,400 RPM when you're cruising. Well, you can't turn a, a propeller that fast, so it's got a gearbox to slow the prop down. So. On that, we also have the vacuum pump that drives some of the instruments in the plane. And then this particular plane also has a cockpit adjustable prop, so as, you know, as we speed up, we can put more pitch into the prop. Originally with the kit comes a uh, ground adjustable prop. And th what that means is when you, if you want to put more pitch in the prop, you have to land, get out, undo some bolts, put a little more pitch in the blade, tighten it all up, take off again and see if that's enough. This particular prop, I can change the pitch of it while I'm flying. And if you look at it closely, you can see I can even move the blades now to show that's how much more pitch I can put in the blade while I'm in the air. And I can do that from inside the cockpit while I'm flying. It's just, uh, as you speed up, more air is going into the prop, so it bites more air, so you need to put more pitch into it so it bites further into the air as you're going. 
Otherwise, the engine will speed up and get going too fast. It can only go up to 5,800. And we want to cruise it at 5,400, so as we get going faster, we put more pitch in it. And uh, it keeps the engine down to a reasonable speed. It's uh, a mechanical lever. Uh, I've got a lever up here on the top, and as I pull the lever inside, it makes this lever push a rod through the center of the gearbox that pushes on a bearing that has a lever inside the hub of this, and as it pushes it in, it makes more pitch happen to the blade. Uh, when you're doing a hydraulically controlled prop, then you got to have a pump up here to run the hydraulics, and uh, you know there's a lot of hoses involved, and so it, it just adds weight to the airplane. And uh, this is pretty simple here, you know, a lever, not too much to break. The uh, stock engine come is 80 horsepower. It comes with a concave piston in it that gives it a nine to one compression ratio, and because it's concave, that gives you some room to compress that air a little more if you put a flat piston in there. What you can do is go, there are a lot of piston manufacturers in the United States that will work with you. So what I did, a friend of mine, when I went to this couple of manufacturers and said, you know, we'd like to raise the compression, put a racing piston in it, see if we can get a little more horsepower out of it. And that's what happens. The, the piston manufacturers will work with you. They helped us set it up. Uh, a little bit of testing, and pretty soon we were running them ourselves. And we have over 400 sets out around the world. Um, have some engines that have over 1,200 hours on them and are still running fine. Uh, I haven't had a single failure in the field. Um, my own engine here, this particular engine, has 500 hours on a set of pistons, and it was just down, and it seems to be working perfectly. When you're building, of course, you find a lot of things that you think you can make better. Some of the things that I've done are where the wing plugs into the fuselage, I've made a cuff come out over top of that crack. Otherwise, you would just see this crack where the wing plugs in to the side of the fuselage. And then also, up here on the, uh, on the back of the canopy, I did kind of the same thing. There's a little cuff here, so that when you close the canopy, it covers over the crack between the back of the canopy and the fuselage keeps the rain from coming in. Okay, and there's one more thing I want to show you down here that was kind of my own little deal was to cover up the mechanism for the nose gear. I made this little fairing around here and I figured, well, that's a good place to put the landing light inside of there. So it kind of fares out the landing gear and makes it look a little better. But that wasn't part of the kit. You know, that's just one of those you know, things that you look at and you say, wow, I could do that better. It took me about four months just to do the panel. I'm going to run around pretty much standard flight instruments here, the VOR, an artificial horizon, your altimeter, a compass, airspeed. Uh, this is a turn coordinator, but also an autopilot. So when I have my GPS in, which isn't in here right now, but it reads the GPS and I can just say, I want to go here, and the autopilot takes over and I'm on my way. Go ahead and take a nap. The rest of this is intercom, uh, communications, radio, transponder, uh, vertical speed, uh, di um, directional gyro. The rest of them are engine instruments and fuel gauges, pretty standard things like you see in your car. Inside, the inside here, real cows gave their lives for this leather right here. <laughs> There's no Nagas dead right here. It's a, it's a comfortable little plane, that's the problem though. You get two adults in here, you have to be really close good buddies. But that's what makes it go fast on only 90 horsepower. Okay, well this, I have pitch and roll trim with this little china hat. If I want the nose to go down, I just push it up, or if I want it to come up, I push it down. Um, this works my flaps. When I'm ready to land, I can just hold this down and the flaps will go down. Um, then when I land, I can just push it up and it'll lock up and the flaps will come all the way up again. This one goes through the memories in my radio, and when I come to the right one, then I can put it in the active window by flipping it the other way. And of course, this has the trigger on the back to key the radio, uh, one of the communications radio. Fuel selector, which I put, a, uh, I put a float switch in each tank. There's three tanks. So whichever tank I have selected, if I'm not paying attention 
and I let the fuel get too low and it had an audible warning that comes on and says, check fuel selector, check fuel selector. Looks pretty good. <laughs> it's almost idiot proof. Almost. <laughs> the trouble with building is it's kind of a disease. You know, you get started and you enjoy it so much and of course the wife enjoys it because she knows you're right out in the garage. And uh, there's something to look at. When you're done, you have something to stand and look at and go places in. And it's a good thing. It's an honorable hobby. <laughs> Here's another guy.